I've decided to make a heck why not video. I need eyeballs. You need eyeballs. Most of us need eyeballs because we need our eyeballs to be able to see. Of course, not everybody is able to see. So it's debatable. It's part of diversity. Part of diversity is also that I have something called Penguin Dispersion Syndrome. I'll come back to that because maybe I no longer do. Who knows? But that's two-sided. So yesterday I went to the eye clinic, to the ophthalmology clinic, and got my eyes examined again. Um, let me first explain what pigment dispersion syndrome is. You have an iris in your eye and you have a lens in your eye. I am nearsighted, which basically means that my lens tries to focus too hard. You could say that it's too muscular. So I cannot see very well in the distance and I need glasses to see in the distance. And when you have an eye like that, it can also be a little bit differently shaped. Let's not get into that. I'm not even sure whether it's related, but the point is that the lens and the iris can touch and then pigment can start to scrape off and then this pigment can start clogging the drainage channels of the eye and then the eye pressure can go up too high and if the eye pressure goes up too high it can damage the ophthalmic is it called the ophthalmic nerve yeah i think so the nerve in your eye and when that happens when your eye pressure starts going up a little bit uh, your eye doctor may say to you at some point it may be better to start using eye drops that happened to me in 2011 or 2012, and this condition was detected in 2008 at a local Specsavers, I think it was, who then referred me to the eye clinic. I was going to say that yesterday the eye doctor said, the ophthalmologist said, that she could barely detect any pigment dispersion syndrome in my eye and I thought oh that's interesting because after I started using those drops I was living in England at the time I could suddenly see the Isle of white in the distance it used to be this gray blob and after I started using eye drops I could clearly see it I could see depending on the weather of course I could see church towers and things like that these details I'd never been able to see before and these eye drops, they have two ways of operating. One is quick and the other one takes a little bit longer. One of them works on the small muscles in your eye. So one of my theories is that this stops my lenses from focusing too much, from, from trying to see close by too much so that it enables me to see better in the distance. That's one theory. Another theory is I used to run on a treadmill every day and I no longer do that. And these high impact exercises can also cause pigment dispersion syndrome or make it worse. It's not the case for everyone and exercise is also good for your health. So unless your eye doctor tells you not to do certain exercises, Never mind, this is just a theory as to why there may not be much left in terms of pigment dispersion syndrome in my eye. My eye pressure these days is the lowest it's ever been. It's uh, In December it was 11 and 12 and yesterday it was 13 and 14 and it used to be 16, 17, 18, 20, 22. And that's roughly that point is when my eye doctor said it may be time to start giving you eye drops because i think it went up to 24 i'm not sure it was either 22 or 24. if you are a woman and you are fair-skinned and you use eye drops like tenopost eye drops to keep the pressure in your eye under control for whatever reason whether you have pigment dispersion syndrome or not then you probably know that these drops cause pigmentation pigmentation of the skin which is very funny if you have pigment dispersion syndrome because if you try to explain that it's probably going to sound really weird um if you don't press your tear ducts shut like this which you should do then you end up with what's called panda eyes because you'll get pigmentation around your eye in the skin if you press your tear ducts shut like that for at least two minutes it takes one minute tests have uh, experiments research has shown that it takes one minute for the stuff to be absorbed so if you take two minutes then it should be 
fine, but if you want to be really safe, then take three minutes. Then you end up with pigmentation here and here, and it makes you look really can make you look really tired. So one trick that I've learned to do recently is I I take eyeshadow, this dark color, can you see that? Yeah. And I put that on my eyelids and it is basically the color of the pigmentation and so it makes the pigmentation, part of the pigmentation disappear. And also when you get older as a woman, your eyes turn beady, they lose their expression and the eyeshadow helps give your eyes a little bit more expression again, I've noticed. Also, I use a tiny little bit of eyeliner. That's one thing that I do. And the second thing, I've only started doing this recently after somebody told me that I look really worn out, basically, is what she said. And she was surprised that I was only 63. It's really strange. I've always looked much, much, much younger than I was. And then when that suddenly, and I hung out with much younger people because I went to university late, and if that then suddenly flips to the other side where you start looking much older than you actually are, that is really hard to deal with. It's alienating. It's, it's very strange. It's, it's, it isolates you. And of course it hampers you because there's a lot of ageism in the world. Let's not call it gerontophobia, but that's what it is. Anyway, point two is I then went out and bought also this. This is a concealer that also has hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. I don't know what the vitamin C does, but never mind. They put this stuff in all sorts of things these days. And I put a little bit of uh, the concealer here and a little bit there. I think that this also works optically. If you use just regular makeup, it doesn't reflect the light. I think concealer reflects the light and that makes your skin then looks, look a little bit lighter. 